click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello guys welcome to ekida today we will see what is the restriction or set of rules on poles and zeros for a impedance function or driving point function which is the driving point impedance we all know what is driving point impedance but a function to be a driving point impedance there is certain rules which it has to satisfy you can see there is a restriction and there are certain rules the first rule is the coefficients in the polynomial of p of s and q of s now what are p of s and q of s they are nothing but network polynomials one is in numerator another one is in denominator and the coefficient must be real and positive now i'll tell you what is p of s and q of s we have seen it when we saw poles and zeros this is the form of p of s and q of s it is having s raised to n it is having s raised to m a and b are the coefficients now for passive elements like resistor inductor and capacitor already we have seen that their values are always positive and for that reason all these coefficients a0 a1 an minus 1 or b0 b1 bm minus 1 they are always positive as well as real second one is if imaginary poles and zeros must be conjugates so even if there is an imaginary zero or imaginary pole it has to occur in complex conjugates or conjugate pairs we will see this as an example now we can always equate this to zero and when we equate to zero we can write it with factors there will be n roots suppose one of the root is with minus sign of course so this is suppose one of the root so how we will write it we will write it as s plus a plus jb here so if there is such a root and such a factor then the rule says that there will be one more factor or one more root such as at least there will be one more factor which will be exactly complex conjugate of this the reason is if you multiply both the negative term goes as well as imaginary terms go so we'll see how suppose we multiply both the brackets what we are going to get is s plus a the whole square so this is what we get s square plus 2s plus a square and b square a and b are always positive real and positive and this 2 also is positive so this is a real polynomial so this occurs only if there is one zero which we took p of s means it is a zero and that was a complex term so it has to be in pairs so this satisfies the second condition now the third condition is the real part of all poles and zeros must be either negative or zero if real part is zero then that pole or zero must be simple we will see this in brief so what do you mean by the real part of pole or zero so we'll take an example suppose for any function in denominator you have something like s minus s a suppose this factor is there in denominator like this now if you take the laplace inverse for this definitely it will result in given function equal to some constant k let us say it is k a and e raised to s a t now what is this s a s a is sigma a plus j omega a. so we'll write it here now we know that obviously this sa is complex so if it is complex there has to be one more pole which we just saw a rule before this and due to conjugate term that is sa conjugate which is going to occur here we will have we can say f dash of t maybe k dash now this 
एस ए कॉन्जुगेट दिस इज एस ए कॉन्जुगेट सेम एक्सेप्ट चेंज ऑफ साइन बिकॉज इट्स कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट and obviously when you want to write this in time domain you combine both this is what we used to do in partial fractions so combine you can write f double dash of t equal to and we can say that we can take both of them as common and when you take it as common we can always write it with sinusoidals and when you combine it some new constant k0 this is what we get and now you can see if you try to plot this term on time domain if this sigma a is positive suppose is positive then it is not nothing but going to be increasing exponential like this and if it is increasing exponential as time t goes to infinity this also signal my function will also go to infinity which is not true and which is not realistic so the graph of this will be and so on so which is increasing exponentially like this and this is not a real graph this is not going to be true at real time so this sigma cannot be positive so this sigma can be either zero or this sigma can be negative if this sigma is negative then our graph will be exactly reverse this is how it is going to be which is decaying exponentially and which is realistic so this sigma should be less than or equal to zero that is a condition now the condition number 4 is the polynomials p of s and q of s they may not have missing terms between those of highest and lowest degree mean suppose this is order 4 then 4 3 2 1 0 all must exist if this is of order 3 then 3 2 1 0 0 these are all orders of s they all must exist except there can be a case where all even or all odd terms can be missing for example this is not allowed because s raised to 3 is not missing but this is allowed because all odd terms are missing and all even terms are present then degree of p of s and q of s may differ by either 0 or 1 only that means highest degree of this p of s or q of s there should be maximum difference of 1 suppose you have p of s like this and you have q of s so this is not allowed because maximum difference here is 2 which is exceeding allowed at difference is only 1 this is 4 and this is 2 so it is not allowed and the last rule is the terms of lowest degree in p of s and q of s may differ in degree by 1 at most so the lowest degree here it is 0 here also it is 0 because it is s raised to 0 here also it is s raised to 0 and this is allowed because they are differing only by 0 suppose the polynomial was like this so here lowest degree is 0 and here lowest degree is 1 so that is allowed so this is how the rule 6 was defined these rules can be proved but they are not expected right now so thank you guys thank you very much for watching this video stay tuned to ikeda and do subscribe to ikeda thank you